Cool guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about the films and series I watched in May. Cool, so before we get into this video, I do know there's a lot of stuff happening all over the world with regards to the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, that's kind of been happening for this last week now. And I just want to acknowledge that. And I just wanted to say, I made a few posts on my Instagram about it and just the in regards with how I feel about everything. But I did also just want to say on this video that we really need to be using this time effectively and we need to be learning from um, people. We need to be growing from people. We need to be humbly listening to people during this time. And we need to be standing together as communities. There have been way too many injustices afflicted on people due to race. And it's something that does need to end. Um, and as people, we need to be learning from each other, growing from each other and and getting this hate and evil out of our communities, um, this hate and evil of racism in society. And um, I really just want to encourage you guys, there's a, there's a whole bunch of different films and documentaries you can watch, there's books we can read, um, there's people in our communities that we can hear stories from. Um, and we need to grow together um, as, as a community and as people. So before we start off this video, I did just want to share a few thoughts on that. And I really hope that the voices of the world will be heard um, during this time and that uh, yeah if you are engaged in protests and all that sort of stuff please be careful during this time um, and use your voice effectively okay cool so without further ado let's get into what I watched in May okay first up we have the new Amazon original show called Upload and this is a show by Greg Daniels again who you will know from The Office and also Space Force which is just coming to Netflix now um, and this show was pretty good it stars Robbie Amell as I guess the main character in the show um, and the, the whole sort of concept or premise of the show is that after you die you get uploaded to this virtual heaven in a sense um, where it has its pros and cons uh, if I can say that and um, it's a really interesting show because Robbie Amell's character is not quite sure why he died and the reasons behind how he died and as the show continues you sort of start to uncover a few pieces here and there. The show is definitely a comedy I would say um, and it's interesting to to see some more deep um, thematic elements throughout the show as well. It does definitely get deeper than just a typical comedy. Some of the jokes don't land all the time but I did think it was quite funny at times as well um, and quite light-hearted and fun as well but it does definitely also get a bit deeper from time to time which I think worked really well with the concept um, and theme of the show. So I highly highly recommend Upload. I watched it quite quickly as well. I watched it like within a week which uh, like I love binging shows but I don't normally binge a show like that in a week so um, I really enjoyed it I must say and I was surprised because I didn't think I was going to like it that much. Okay, and then we watched John Carpenter's The Thing, and um, I said this a little bit in the, the Movies to Watch in Quarantine video I did a couple of weeks ago, um, but this film was really, really intense, really suspenseful, you feel very claustrophobic and isolated throughout the film. The practical effects in this film are beautiful and insane. When I say beautiful, they are super gory and super like hectic, but it's just great to see practical effects being used so, so well. Um, so I highly recommend this film if you do sort of like this more um, intense, isolated or isolation sort of films. Um, I do recommend it for that. It's also one of Kurt Russell's best roles I've seen him in personally. Um, I thought he was great in this film. Um, definitely one of his more iconic roles as well. So definitely go check out The Thing as well if you are interested. Okay, and then I also re-watched Baby Driver and this film is just incredible with its editing, with its, its soundtrack and, and the music throughout the film absolutely brilliant i love edgar Wright, and this film was really well done it was really well edited really well made and um i've enjoyed it every single time i've, I've watched it um, and each time i rewatch it as well i sort of enjoy different aspects of it more um and um again for this this re-watching of the film i just i was absolutely in awe of its brilliant editing there's just such such good editing in this film it's just timed to the cue of the music so so well and stuff like that and um, I highly recommend this film if you have not yet seen it and if you have seen it re-watch it because it's really really well made and I know it got a lot of hype sort of when it initially released but I kind of feel like it sort of died down a bit now and I really do think it's one of those films that is going to age really really well down the line um, despite Kevin uh, Spacey's casting in the film 
which we're not going to get into. Um, but yeah, this this film is a really great film, and um, I've enjoyed it every single time I've watched it, and it was great to rewatch it once again. Cool, then I also watched Solo Opposites, which um, is a show that's co-created by Justin Roiland, um, who you'll know from Rick and Morty. And um, the show definitely has a very similar art style to Rick and Morty, and um, in a way similar concepts at time. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a fun show. It's a Hulu original show, um, so it's, it's not Adult Swim like Rick and Morty is. Um, but... It was a good show for the most part, I did enjoy a lot of it, because it does share very similar styles and sometimes themes as Rick and Morty, I think that's why I did enjoy it a lot. Definitely not as strong as Rick and Morty, if I'm honest, and there's a bit of a side story throughout the the Solar Opposites uh, first season, which I actually was gravitating more towards. I found it a lot more interesting than, the, I guess, the main storyline throughout the show, which is quite interesting. Um, so I'm very curious to see how they take the second season of the show, um, because if there are people like myself who are sort of, sort of enjoying the side story a bit more, I would be curious to see if they sort of make that more of the main storyline um, going forward. I think I'll definitely get renewed for a second season, um, it seems to definitely have that rewatchability um, as Rick and Morty did and I'm very curious to see where they take the storyline and the characters going forward. I'd say if you do like Rick and Morty it's definitely something to check out um, but it's not as good at the moment as Rick and Morty is in my opinion. Speaking of Rick and Morty I finished the second half of season 5 this month as well and um, that was absolutely fantastic. Um, Rick and Morty's in a place right now where I've obviously loved it for years and years and years. I've absolutely loved Rick and Morty, but the, just the, the long delay between seasons has definitely made me lose a bit of hype for Rick and Morty personally. Um, I, I'll, I'll watch it as soon as it comes out when it releases, but I think it has suffered a bit for me personally that it's, it's taken so long for them to release each season. Um, a lot of the hop for me is definitely gone and I feel like when the seasons were coming out quite uh, progressively and consistently um, like a couple of years ago it was really fun because there was a lot of anticipation being built for each season but now we don't even really have much of a guideline on when seasons are coming out they sort of just drop episodes um, for, the, for, for whatever season they're in like at random times that's what it seems at least for me um, so yeah, that's, it's definitely made me lose a bit of hop for Rick and Morty, which is sad because I really did love the show. And I still do love it, I'm just not as, I guess, invested as I, as I was a couple of years ago. That being said, the second half of season 5 was definitely stronger than the first half in my opinion. And um, the season finale for season 5 was one of the best Rick and Morty episodes I think I've seen in a long, long time. So that was really great to see and um, I'm really excited for the sixth season. I just hope it doesn't take forever for us to get there. Yeah. Parkour, parkour! Parkour, parkour! I'm right behind you, Andy! Come on! Do it! Yeah! Parkour. Okay, and then we also watched Scoob and Scoob was made to come out um, in cinemas, but obviously that did not happen. So it, it was released onto VOD video on demand and I checked it out and um, it wasn't great. <laughs> And I've heard some people who really love this film and mad respect to them, but um, I wasn't ever really allowed to watch Scooby-Doo as I was growing up. Um, I sort of did watch it a bit more towards when I was getting a bit older as a child and then sort of earlier on in my teenage years. Um, and uh, I watched the live action film as well, um, which James Gunn did um, and stuff like that. And from, from that little experience and I guess, um, what's the right word here? exposure I had to Scooby-Doo, there was a lot of cool mystery involved with the, the storyline and with its characters. Um, and I liked how they used more sort of like horror elements or scary elements to to reveal that it's just all a facade and it's, it's sort of done by normal people and regular people. And I think it's a really interesting concept that Scooby-Doo had. And sadly this film throws all of that out the window and it doesn't even feel much like a Scooby-Doo film, in my opinion. There were also some really, like, bad jokes that are trying to be sort of, like, woke, if I can say that, in the film, and it just didn't work for this movie at all. And I'm not, not saying it's a bad thing for films to try 
have jokes like that in their movie but I think in this film it just didn't work and it fell really really flat in that regard. I will say some of the the voice acting was pretty good which is great but besides that um, I will probably never watch this movie again which is quite sad and I didn't enjoy it quite frankly I thought it was very average. Cool and then next up we watched uh, Jojo Rabbits. I rewatched this film uh, about Taika Waititi and it is absolutely fantastic. For some reason I get so emotional watching this movie and I have no idea why. I feel super super happy at some parts of the film and then just incredibly sad and heartbroken at other parts. And I think the film is really unique in that way. It's, it's sort of showing us these really incredible life moments for a child and it's being told from a child's perspective. Um, and I think I think it captures that so so well, like the, the essence of what a child could feel in these instances um, and I think it's something we can all relate to because we've all been children and um, yeah there are just really incredible moments in this movie um, that are, are being captured and told from a child's perspective. Cool and then we watched Donnie Darko for the first time and this film is interesting, very very interesting. Um, I'm a bit confused about what actually happened and I kind of love that. Um, there are definitely there's definitely a lot of room for interpretation with this film. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal is absolutely incredible in this film. Um, he's really young, which is quite funny to see. Um, but yeah, he was really, really great in this film. And his sister in real life is also in the movie, which is quite great. So I thought that was quite cool. Um, but yeah, this film just was shot really beautifully. Um, really interesting storyline and premise for the film. Um, I did also watch the director's cut, I must just say that, because apparently it fills in a bit more information opposed to the original theatrical release. Um, but yeah, I flipping enjoyed it. I thought it was really, really good. Um, it's it made me think for so so long. Like I've been thinking about it like constantly since I'd watched it. Definitely don't think I've understood completely what the film is about yet. I'm still trying to sort of make my own theories and and interpretation of the film, if I can say that. Um, but it's a really great movie, and I highly recommend you check it out. It was it was it was incredible. Okay, then I watched Patton Oswalt's new Netflix special, I Love Everything. Um, and I don't, yeah, Netflix comedy specials are usually a hit and miss for me. Some of them are really good, some of them are absolutely terrible. And um, this one was kind of in the middle for me. I know Patton Os Oswalt has, has had a really rough couple of years over these last years as he lost his wife and he's remarried now. And the one thing I appreciated about this comedy special is... It's 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 funny, but it's also a bit a bit more light-hearted um, and optimistic compared to other comedy specials on Netflix, and I kind of like that because a lot of the time, um, especially recently, like a lot of uh, comedy specials have been really just crude and um, yeah, like it's not necessarily a bad thing for comedy, but um, it is nice that especially during this tough time that we're in at the moment. Um, that this comedy special felt a bit more light-hearted and um yeah it was it was just it was a feel-good comedy special cool then i watched the hunt i will be honest i dozed off a little bit so i didn't get the full story but this film i don't know it didn't work for me personally <laughs> it's quite crazy um i don't want to go too much into details with it and it's still quite new so in case you guys check it out but um yeah it just it felt a bit all over the place at times. I'd say the film does start off pretty unpredictable but then it very quickly becomes extremely predictable and you kind of know exactly how the movie is going to end from like halfway through the movie. So I think it's trying very hard to be a, a, f a film that's commenting on politics but it's, it's, it's doing that in a way that's making it really difficult to watch if that makes sense. I don't really know what to say about this one. But if you guys thought differently, let me know in the comments down below. I could definitely see this film having a core group of, of fans, I guess, um, or like a cult following. Um, I could definitely see it uh, having that. Um, but for me personally, it just didn't work that well. Um, and as I said, I did doze off like a bit in the middle. So maybe I missed something important. Um, and then lastly, for this month, I watched a lot of Mad Men. I watched four seasons of Mad Men. And this is why I haven't watched as many movies this month. Because um, my month has kind of just been all about Mad Men. And the reason for this is a friend recommended it to me. So I wanted to check it out. But then I also saw that I was going off Netflix on the 9th of June. 
So I'm having to binge watch this show so, so much um, before it goes off. And I'm really, really enjoying it. So it's a great, great, great show so far. Um, I'll definitely speak a bit more about it next month when I finish the series. Um, but it's been interesting. I, I, I really have enjoyed it. Um, I would say I recommend Mad Men, but it's also going off Netflix and I don't know where it's going next. So it's going to be pretty difficult to watch it. But we can speak a bit more about that next month. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for what I watched in May. Please let me know um, what you guys watched, if you watched anything really good this month um, in May. And yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. Please stay safe out there um, with all this protesting going on and also all the coronavirus stuff happening still. Um, I hope you guys are doing good and uh, stay safe and use your voices to make the world better. Um, I love you guys so much. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.